Hi everyone, this is Dr. Dan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a low pass first order active filter using op amps. And I'm just gonna go ahead and build it in Tinkercad, but it would be the same thing if we were physically building this on our breadboard. So I'll use Tinkercad, uh, put our breadboard in to make an active filter. Obviously we need to use an op amp. So you can search for operational amplifier. And we're just gonna stick it across the breadboard like this. So none of the inputs are connected to each other. Okay, and the first trick with op amps is that they have two different power sources, right? So on one side, you can see it says power minus, and that's pin one, two, three, four. And on the other side is power plus. That means we need to provide negative voltage on this side and some equal positive voltage on this side. Okay, and the way we can do it is find some batteries. Um, nine volt batteries work well. So I'm gonna hook up a nine volt battery over to our rails here see these are all connected together so that's the negative side of the 9 volt battery uh, which corresponds to that negative sign and the same thing this is the positive side of that 9 volt battery which corresponds to the positive side we're going to need a second battery on this side okay and so this side it obviously says we need negative power so it's very easy right i'm just going to connect a negative terminal here to negative power there and i'm going to make my wire color black just to make it easier to tell that's negative power and same thing over here our pin 7 is positive power so I want to connect positive from this battery to this terminal and I'll make it red to denote uh, positive power so our black is negative our red is positive okay so that seems like it should work right but the trick here is we need to define what is going to be zero volts in our system okay because Technically, these nine volts, all that means is these two terminals are nine volts from each other. It doesn't matter which really direction we're thinking about. Yes, in this case, this is nine volts less than this one, but that could be this is at zero volts and this is at negative nine volts. It could be that this is at positive nine volts and this is at zero, right? It could be that you define this as positive four and a half volts and this is negative four and a half volts and someplace else in the circuit is zero. Right, so that's, that's kind of the trick here is we need to define what is going to be zero. And so for our case, we want this to be negative nine volts. So because there's a difference between uh, of nine volts here and this is negative nine, this is going to be zero volts. This positive voltage terminal is going to be zero volts in our circuit. Okay, and likewise on the other side, the input here has to be positive power. So we want this to be positive nine volts which there's a difference of nine volts here. So that means this has to be zero volts as well. Okay, and so we're gonna just create this spot in the circuit where everything touching that is going to be our zero reference. I know it's a little bit confusing if you've not done this before, um, but hopefully just by practicing, you'll kind of get the feel of this. So what I'm gonna say is this outside lane here is gonna be zero volts. And also this one here is going to be zero volts. And so we wanna connect those together and I'll use green. Green is kind of a ground thing, which is our zero volts. So I'm connecting those two together to define that that is our zero volt point. And so that's how we are able to give our op amp negative voltage on this side and positive nine volts on this side. Okay, if we are able to measure the difference across, we would see it's actually 18 volts. And so that's what we can do with a multimeter here. Right, so negative side, I'm gonna go ahead and stick that there. Positive side, I'm gonna go stick that there. And let's go ahead and run the simulation. Right, and so it shows us 18 volts across that. Because that's one of our important things to remember, right, is we are supplying positive voltage on this side in pin seven. We are applying negative voltage on pin four of our op amp. Okay, and if you mess that up, that's how you can burn an op amp out. And so you should check and make sure you're seeing if you're using nine volt batteries, you would expect to see approximately 18 volts across those two terminals. So I'm gonna stop the simulation. I'm gonna delete these things because that was just for testing. So now we have the power working correctly to power our op amp. And now we need to provide these other inputs at these other pins, right? And so there's a couple that we don't need to worry about. This pin one offset, we don't need to worry about. The pin eight not connected, we don't need to worry about. And pin five which is the offset two we don't need to worry about all we need to worry about now is the two inputs and the output okay let's go to our circuit 
So this is the low pass filter we're trying to build. Okay, and so you can see there are two inputs here that we need to put in the input pins and then our output pin, which is pin six. Positive input is just going straight to ground. So that's an easy connection. So our positive in, we just make a connection to our ground, which we decided was zero volts. Our negative input is coming from our signal. Okay, but it's also coming through a resistor to our signal. So we need to wire that up. So we're going to have some sort of resistor that's going in to this uh, in two pin, pin two. Um, so right now I'm not going to worry about the values. I'm just going to go back, get me a resistor, rotate it around so that I can put that in there. I might even move it up one here. There we go. Okay, and now this is where I will provide my input signal. Then I'll go through the resistor and then into pin two, the in two. Uh, so our, for our case, we're gonna look at the function generator to give us a nice little sine wave input. I can put this wherever, I'll just put it down here. Okay, and so our input signal is going to go from positive through the resistor and then in, into. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this wire to, and I'll make it orange uh, to designate our signal. And then the negative of this function generator, we can just wire straight to ground, okay? Because that's just going to be our negative voltage. Again, I'll keep it green. Everything green is going to be at zero volts. Okay, so we've pretty much finished up wiring the input side of this, right? We got our input voltage right here going through the resistor and into that pin. Now we need to think about the output and then these feedback loops, okay? So let's go ahead, we'll wire up the output. The output is going to be our oscilloscope so that we can see what it looks like. Okay, in this case, we do wanna have, consider what we're gonna do here because this is an inverting amplifier. Um, we could, uninvert it by putting the positive into the negative. And so that's what I think I'm going to do to start. Um, that way it will flip the signal back. Um, that's something you wouldn't do if you had a two filters, one after another, where they invert each other. So our output, I'm gonna go ahead and stick into the negative. Again, I'll make that orange because that's, the, that's kind of our signal we wanna modify. And the positive here, we just wanna drag it to ground. There we go. We can see that we have this stuff set up. Now we just need to have some sort of feedback loop going through a resistor and through a capacitor back into our input, right? And these are parallel circuits. Okay, so I think the easiest way to do that is just kind of do it out over here where you can, you can see it happening. I'll get this out of the way. So we're gonna need a resistor and I'm gonna go ahead and put it across um, the board here. And we're also going to need a capacitor. Um, and so I'm just trying to decide where I should put this, right? I know that one side of the capacitor is going to be the same, like our cap they're basically gonna be in parallel with each other, right? So I'm trying to decide how to do that most efficiently. Um, if we look at our diagram again, Right, basically both sides of the capacitor and resistor are connected to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead, so these are attached, but now I need to attach this one to this one. And just to make it clean, I'll go ahead and draw a wire from here to there. I'm gonna go ahead and color this wire. I'll go ahead and color it. We'll put the feedback side here yellow, okay? So I'll color the wire yellow. And now I just need to connect the output of this to those two. Oops, that didn't work for me. I might have to move this capacitor out of the way. Again, I'll color that yellow. Okay, so now we basically have these two things, both, so there's one node with three connections, which is right here, right? We have our output going to our resistor and to our capacitor. 
And on the other side, right now we have the resistor and capacitor connected together, but we need to put it on the input. So that's just dragging a wire. I'll go ahead and go from here to the input and make this thing yellow. Okay, so we have successfully built the circuit according to this diagram, right? That's a low pass active filter that we have built. And now we want to set it up and test it. And this is where I'll bring in Excel. I don't really know what resistor capacitor combination we'll choose. So this is where I always bring in Excel to help me do some math, right? So if I have R1, R2, and C, right, we can calculate the gain. And that's just going to be R2 over R1. Um, and we can calculate the cutoff frequency, which is going to be 1 uh, over 2 pi times and in this case it's R2 and it's gonna get really mad at me because it doesn't like me dividing by zero okay but let's say we wanted a gain of I don't know 10 right so we put 10 kilo ohms 10 e3 and 100 kilo ohms 100 e3 right so that's our gain of 10 and now we want to choose our cutoff frequency let's go ahead and do a 0.33 microfarad capacitor Right, so that gives us about you know 4.8 hertz cutoff frequency for this. Okay, so remember this is a, a low pass filter, so it's going to pass everything below 4.8, um, and it's going to kill everything above that. So that's awful. That's cutting off a lot of frequency. So maybe I don't want to use something that extreme, right? Maybe I'll go down to 0.22. Okay, seven. So 7 hertz is our, our cutoff frequency in this case. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set these up. Okay, so my one resistor is here. I said I'm going to make this 10 kilo ohms. This resistor, I'm going to make 100 kilo ohms. Just make sure I have it right. Okay, and this one, I said I'm going to make 0 0.22 microfarad. Okay, and so we expect a gain of 10. We expect a cutoff frequency of about seven. So let's go ahead and set up our input, right? So our frequency, at first just gonna stick frequency one. So it's not gonna be cut off. The amplitude I'm gonna set pretty low at one because that means we'd expect it to be amplified 10. So it's gonna be up to 10 volts, no DC offset and set it as a sine wave. And let's go ahead and run and see what happens here. Okay, and it looks like it works great. Okay, I mean, this is hard to tell, but this is, it says this is one second. So that's one wave per second, which is one hertz, perfect, right? And this full scale is 20, um, and we're about half that, right? It goes about halfway up and halfway down. So we're about 10 volts. So it's working perfectly as we expected. Okay, so now what happens if we increase the frequency? I'll go ahead and increase it to 10. Right? And so you can see, we now have less voltage. This is closer to probably six volts, right? Instead of one, two, three, yeah, three plus, plus and minus three on each side of the oscilloscope. So right, the, the filter is working. It's starting to cut off high frequency. And so if I got even higher frequency, like 100 hertz, right, you can see it's way down now. We're under a volt, um, peak to peak voltage. Okay, so that's how you build a low-pass filter. And like I said, I did this in Tinkercad on the computer, but it's just like building the actual hardware if you had it yourself.